Why wouldn't someone use the support class in Battlefield 1? This class has infinite ammunition, really good gadgets like the Limpertouts, and the ability to resupply your teammates. I don't really use the support class myself either. The reason is the weapons this class has, or had until the next DLC in the name of the Tsar is gonna be released. It's the best surprise the Russian DLC could ever bring to Battlefield 1 players. And it's called the MG1417 Parabellum. A beast gun. Did you hear me? A 700 rounds per minute beast, which melts enemy infantry players. Any player who will cross this gun lethal rate of fire has no chance of reaction. He will instantly die. This thing is so OP that it probably will get nerfed the moment the gun is gonna be released. So let's break it down and see what's the deal with the MG1417 Parabellum. Let's just call it the Parabellum from now on, shouldn't we? The Parabellum comes in two variants, the low weight and the suppressive one. As you guessed by now, the low weight comes with an iron sight and the suppressive comes with a magnification scope. The low weight variant, which in my opinion is the one that should be the most popular among players, comes with an iron sight that dies, I think in purpose, made it decent enough for close to medium range engagements. As you can see in the gameplay, it's not a very big and clear iron sight. In my opinion DICE did good with that, and let me explain why. With a 700 rounds per minute rate of fire, and 23 damage at close quarters approximately, cause the statistics aren't done yet, this melting machine needs to have some downsides. So the first one is the iron sight. The other one is the recoil. To handle the parabellum in medium range, you need to deal with a pretty crazy horizontal recoil and some less crazy vertical one. But again, with the rate of fire this gun has, you should probably kill very quick in medium ranges as well. So, with the statistics that we have for now, the Parabellum is really good at close range engagements and very very good at close to medium range engagements. Pretty decent at medium uh, though engagements. In close quarters, this gun will probably be outplayed from shotguns and the automatico and nothing else. In close to medium engagements, this gun will probably be the king. The king out of all guns in Battlefield 1. A 700 rounds per minute gun with a decent damage and a 100 round clip and a hundred more for each of ammunition. Is this for real? And it gets even better. Both of the Parabellum's variants, the low weight and the suppressive one, comes with a bipod. So there's your medium to long kills. With the bipod deployed, it's like a mounted machine gun, a mobile one. Speaking of that, this gun first came out as a mounted machine gun, the MG14. They changed the clip to make it lighter and the MG1417 Parabellum was born. Crazy thing is the fact that I was confused two times in the game with a Parabellum enemy player. I thought it was a sentry. So with the Biper deployed behind cover, good luck enemy players, enemy infantry players. And not only infantry players. Planes are going to have a hard time as well with the Parabellum. It does a pretty decent damage against them, believe me. And DICE wants infantry players to engage against enemy planes, but I will explain that later in the video. So let's sum it up. A low weight iron sight or a suppressive scoped light machine gun with 700 rounds per minute rate of fire, a bipod, 100 rounds per clip that overheats at about 40 rounds with a very good recall to close to medium engagements. We are talking for a fun favorite here guys. The Bar Storm, I believe the most common light machine gun used till now, 
had a big downside, a 20 round clip that would allow you if you happen to be a pro at aiming to kill 3 enemy players most. So the Parabellum has really no competition in the support class. Good job there dice and good luck to enemy players. I suppose that Alveon map, the Fedora of Automat for the medic class and the Parabellum for the support class are going to be the most common reasons for someone to buy the new DLC in the name of the Tsar. Now, as you know from my previous new weapons videos, every gun has an assignment in order to unlock it. So it's two assignments in order to unlock the two variants for the Parabellum. For the Assault and the Medic class, well, really common assignments with some kills, some revives and this kind of stuff. For the Parabellum though, you've got some work to do. In order to unlock the new low weight variant, you need to beat down two enemy planes. Yes, you heard that right, you need to kill two enemy planes with the medicine MG trends. So it's clear here that Tyus wants infinite players to do more damage when they see an enemy plane. You also have to do 20 kills with the Airbus mortar. For the suppressive variant, you need to do 40 kills with the Lewis Can low weight, the one that you start the game with, and 50 vehicle repairs. So get your repair tool out and start sweating. Not an easy task to unlock these two. I like that, I think the assignments need to be complicated. It's more interesting this way. Before I close the video, I have to inform you that there will be one more support gun called the Perino 1908 and I think Tice is keeping it secret and will give that one with the release of the new DLC in the name of the Tsar. I absolutely love the Parabellum, it's a reason for me to play the support class more and I like that very much. So that's it from me guys, if you enjoyed the video please give a thumbs up, if you didn't give a thumbs down and I'll see you in the next video.